Hey everyone, my name is Maisha and I'm a beauty director at Sephora and I'm joined by Courtney. Hello. And we're gonna show you how to do this really beautiful jewel toned look for deeper skin. I find that anybody lo looks really good in jewel tones, but I feel like with deep skin, it just comes off so effortlessly. Uh, jewel tones are a bit more saturated than your average color. They have a little bit more depth to them. Uh, so they naturally just sort of look very vibrant and cohesive on deeper skin. And with deeper skin, you can actually wear more color, I think, very, very easily. So we're gonna show you how to do this like very fun, maybe party look, jewel toned party look, or maybe a Tuesday for me personally, uh, but I think it looks really good on Courtney. I'm gonna show you how we did it. So I wanna do a very colorful look on Courtney. We were talking about uh, what colors we were gonna do, and you were kinda down for everything, so I'm excited about that. I feel like jewel tones always look so beautiful on deep skin because they have this sort of like deep saturation. When you think jewel tones, think like, you know, rich lady furs and all that stuff, like those deep saturated hues, not your pastels, like deeply saturated, like rubies and stuff sapphires and emeralds and things like that look so good on deep skin because they have the same depth as deep skin. So they're not gonna look ashy. I think the uh, Jackie Ina palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills just has this beautiful array of colors. And of course it was made by Jackie. So it has these gorgeous medium to deep tones that are gonna look really pretty. I am partial to purple. I love purple eyeshadow. So we're probably gonna be dipping into the purples and a little bit of this sort of like green brown to create this beautiful sort of saturated jewel tone look. On Courtney's eyes. Very excited. Mm -hmm. So Courtney has a little bit of leftover mascara and eyeliner. I'm just gonna go right over that. I'll be taking the Urban Decay 24-7 pencil and this is Perversion, the blackest black. It's my favorite. It's just really creamy and saturated and I want to create a very smoky saturated lash line. I'll be taking my small shadow brush from Sephora collection and just softening that line and sort of buffing it across. I like to do eyeliner before and after just to make sure that it's sort of sandwiched in between the shadow. Uh, sometimes when you have a lot of shadow, it's kind of hard to get to the lash line again to make it really deep and saturated. But if you put it on before or after, um, it just ensures that you have a nice saturated smoky eye. And go ahead and open. And just that is gorgeous. We could just do a, a black smoky eye and that'd be beautiful. Go ahead and look up for me. So to keep your eyes from looking too small and kind of closed off, I'm not really putting any black in the waterline right now. I'm just kind of keeping it underneath the eye on the outer corner. So this is gonna create the perfect base for a smoky eye. Especially if you have a brown skin or deeper skin, you wanna have a base that's really saturated. So when you put your shadow on top of it, it kind of holds and it photographs really nicely. I feel more fabulous already. You don't even know, but you just trust me. You just trust um, me that this is really pretty. <laughs> when I have you turns, so I could do the other eye. Go ahead and close for me. It's the same thing over here. I'm really just shaping it like a regular eyeliner, thinner in the inner corner, getting slightly thicker on the outer corner. Because I'm going to smudge it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I still want it to be neat. Taking this brush, smudging it a bit, Courtney has really dark lashes naturally. If you don't have dark lashes naturally, then you may want to tight line or make sure you wiggle that pencil in between the lashes so there's no gaps or sort of flesh color showing in between the lashes. But again, Courtney has nice dark lashes, so that's not a problem here. Same thing, rimming the bottom. And anytime you lay down cream or darker colors, but especially a creamy color, it's going to expand when you blend it. So put a thin line, and as you blend it, it's gonna sort of grow. So better to start with a little bit and apply more as you need it than apply too much, and it becomes too large of a smoky eye. Now if you look down, just with your eyes, look over that way. This just lets me get that inner corner, making sure the liner is nice and tight. Look this way. Perfect side eye. Mm-hmm, basically and kind of making sure you have a nice tight sort of liner and making sure you can't see any flashes really the difference between a smoky eye that's just like super polished and one that needs a little bit of work. So you can do just that and I think that's gorgeous doing a smoky liner, especially if you don't have a steady hand, doing a smoky liner is a perfect thing to do to set up your shadow. I wanna go in with the purples with the Jackie Ina palette, but first I'm gonna do a little bit of cream shadow to make sure everything is nice and saturated. And this is the Sephora Collection Sheer Liquid Shadow, and this is the color Amethyst. It's a beautiful color on its own, but underneath the purple 
shadow. It's gonna be gorgeous. Go ahead and close your eyes. I'm just using the tapered crease brush. And these are perfect for those of you who just want a natural sort of beautiful wash of color. You can really build these up intensity wise. I find that on deeper skin, the intensity is really bumped up. But what I'm going to do is just lay this down. So when I put the purple shadow down, I don't have to put much of it down. It's going to last all day because these are a long wear liquid shadows and it's going to give me more of a pop. If you wanted to, you really could just wear this and it's gorgeous. But I just want to make sure I have a proper base. I always love a cream shadow. It just makes the, the shadows pop more, makes it more long lasting and also photographs a lot better. I'm always afraid of cream shadows, but... Oh my god, they're the best. I don't think I could do my eyeshadow without cream shadow. You're making it seem so simple right now. You're giving me courage to try this without you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a video. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like sometimes liquid foundation will look more natural than powder foundation sometimes because it's more skin-like. It's kind of the same thing with, with cream shadows. They just look really seamless. They look like skin, and because they're creamy the powder shadow just sticks to them really well. You don't have to work as hard. Well, I'm all about not working hard. Mm -hmm. If you want to as well, you could take a little bit on the brush and just add a little bit of that purple on the lower lash line. It's preference how low you go with this. I kind of feel like a smoky eye that dips kind of low is really beautiful. Um, if you have dark circles, which Courtney does not, go ahead and look up for me, you can sort of hide them with shadow. I usually take my my shadow on the bottom pretty low. Makes it look more dramatic, kind of has a cool effect to it. So again, this is pretty all by itself. You really could just do that and call it a day. So I wanna go in with this credit color right here. This pretty much matches your skin tone. It's this beautiful like mahogany color. But before I do that, I'm gonna go in with ginger just to add as a transition color. And I'm just gonna pop it right in here and transition colors, you just kind of want them to melt into your skin. They shouldn't be too obvious. Sometimes transition <laughs> colors tend to be a little bit ashier on deeper skin, but ginger has so much warmth to it. Um, it's kind of a cinnamony color that it just melts right into the skin. So after we've added that sort of transition color, just to get that really beautiful blend, we're gonna go in with credit and we're just gonna kind of add a little bit more definition to that crease color. So with the eye open, I feel like it's very important to do your crease color with your eye open. So when you're doing this at home later, just look straight into a mirror because I can see exactly where the crease is right there. So I'm just putting my crease brush right into that socket. And I'm just going back and forth, like the outer two thirds or so I would say. And I'm just kind of letting your orbital bone it's right in here, that bone you feel when you put eye cream on. Mm -hmm. Kind of guide me. It's very relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's like my eyeball is getting massaged. I'm pretty gentle. You are. <laughs> I try to be. So we're just adding that crease color in. And it's kind of mingling with the purple and creating like this burgundy shade. It's the perfect crease color. And we're doing sort of the outer two thirds of the eye. You can go in a little bit if you want to, but really the outer two thirds is really what we want that eye to do on the outer corner. That kind of gives you sort of like a, a feline effect without doing a cat eye. Ooh. So we're gonna do this on the other side. Just look straight ahead for me. So we're just putting it in the socket and just moving back and forth. Courtney has really big eyes, but from the lash line to the brow bone, there's not a lot of room. So if I do really big motions, I'm probably gonna end up putting eyeshadow on her brow bone that I don't want there. So I have to be very careful with um, how powerful my motions are. I just wanna be very delicate. Cause I'm sure that's happened to you where you put black eyeshadow on and it ends up way too high. I've definitely done it to <laughs> myself. <laughs> Everything wrong with makeup that you can do, I've pretty much done it, but that's part of the game. You just, you learn. It's part of learning. I remember when purple eyeshadow, I just looked so insane whenever I did purple eyeshadow in high school, junior high. I think I wasn't using the right saturation. I was using very frosty purples and they just didn't work with me. Things don't work with you? Things don't work. What? <laughs> Okay, so adding that really nice transition color in the crease, it deepened the purple uh, because it sort of works with Courtney's skin so well. It just looks like I put a deeper purple there and intensified that and gave her eyes a lot more shape. 
Okay, so we're gonna go into the shimmery purple, uh, which is Shookington, and we're gonna use that same small shadow brush we used to blend the black liner. Go ahead and close for me. So because I laid down a cream shadow, all I have to do is tap and press, and the pigment will sort of grab like a magnet because it has something creamy underneath. I love these names for these colors. I want to be. Yeah, we didn't even go over the super fun ones. They're yeah. just fun names overall. I want to be one of the people who throw names into the hat <laughs> for colors. So we're going to pop a little bit more of that on the center of the lid. Take our crease brush and just blend the edges. I think people try to blend over the actual color. And really, you just need to blend the edges. So we're just tapping. You can sweep if you want to as well. But you don't have to put a million layers of this on because you have that cream. Kind of works as a base. I like regular eyeshadow primers that are translucent, but having that extra sort of layer of color just makes it so that it's more intense without you having to try so hard. So a little just on the center. So the center of your eyelid kind of has that sheen. All right, so we're just gonna touch up that liner. I'm just gonna smudge it with that same shadow brush I've been using. I just cleaned it off. It had purple shadow on it, so if I were to use it without cleaning it off the little brush cleaner, um, it's basically gonna make my liner purple, which is not a bad thing, but I wanna keep that, that darkness of the, the black. And you can kind of, uh, once you get really comfortable with blending black, Liner, you can kind of build it up into the crease if you want to. Instead of using black shadow, it really makes it nice and dark in the outer corner. So if you don't have a lot of lid space, I wouldn't do this smokiness very high because you're gonna eat up some of your lid space. If you have big lids, you can definitely go super high with this and make this really smoky. You can use your lower lash line for the smokiness if you feel like you have uh, not a lot of lash space or not a lot of lid space. Just use your lower lash line. So we'll be using the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara uh, Volumizing Super Black. I think it's a perfect addition to a smoky eye. So I'm just going in and deepening the lashes. She already had a little bit of mascara on. I just wanna make sure that they are nice and black against this purple. And now that I'm looking at it and I see the lashes, I think I'm actually going to add a little bit of highlight. So Soleil right here, go ahead and look straight ahead. I find that a lot of times you see what you need to do when you finish up your eye look with mascara. Your lashes kind of tell you like what you need. And it just looks really pretty and you can tell exactly where you need to add. So we're gonna finish off with the most beautiful shade of lip gloss. I think it just complements the purple shadow so well. And this is from Marc Jacobs Beauty. This is the Enamored Dazzling Gloss Lip Lacquer. And this is the Lust and Stardust Collection. This is the shade Atomic, which I think is really beautiful. We were trying to decide what color it is and we decided it's like four colors. Um, it's sort of a copper, pink, it has some peach in there, really pretty glitter, but it doesn't feel gritty on your lips. And because it's a lip lacquer, it has actually more color than a traditional lip gloss. It's kind of like in between a gloss and a lipstick. And what's beautiful about this is with deep skin, you can wear so much color. You can sort of color block your lips and eyes. You can wear like a deep emerald green on the eyes and wear like a really beautiful eggplant on the lips. Uh, we're doing another dual tone on the lips with the with the eyes. So you can really actually wear a ton of color when you have brown skin just because it just looks so good next to each other without looking overdone. I love this color. It reminds me of a sunset. Mm-hmm. It's so, so pretty. And I think it looks different on everybody. Sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's copper. It's multi-dimensional, mm -hmm. like my eyeshadow. <laughs> Learning so much. Whenever there's like a glittery or a metallic shade like this, I like to put a sheer layer all over and then just sort of like layer it on where I want it, just so I don't end up putting too much. 
I like to use the back of my lip brush to kind of clean up certain things. So there you go. We did these gorgeous jewel tones on Courtney. I think you could do blues. I love blue eyeshadow, topaz, uh, emeralds are really gorgeous. Any of those like beautiful, deeply saturated colors doesn't mean that's the only colors you can do. They're just very effortless to do. So if you have a favorite jewel tone color that you like doing, you can leave it in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions, you can also subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our content. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, thank you.